From time to time, we do these special topics that some of them may appear beyond the topic of modern art. We still talk about them because I think that art is something above it all in the world. Art represents human aspiration, frustration, and suffering generally. We may say that without art, we have no reason to live. So art is beyond the proportions, angles, values, and tones, and beyond artists' styles that we try to understand through their works and lives. We may say that art, like music, is that last residue of romance in us when all other hopes are gone. When I first come to America. What impressed me the most was probably the American can-do spirit. Americans almost naively thought that they could think of anything, say anything, and put anything on the market. If they could get customers, they could even become rich. Who they were, or to be more precisely, who their parents were, meant little. What they did meant everything. This was commonly known as the American dream. Americans had no fear against speaking against what they thought was evil. They somehow trusted that their politicians would have a self-imposed limit in committing dirty tricks, because the politicians ultimately work for the people through the constitutional democratic system. For someone from China, that was nothing short of amazing. The downside of this is, of course, if and when their politicians actually start going down the slope. The situation would quickly get to the point that the people would lose the opportunities to stop it from becoming an avalanche. Once the society is on the other side, like China was more than 2,000 years ago, it would be almost impossible to turn the tide. Many Americans think the medieval Europe was the Dark Ages. They obviously have never lived in China. What we see here is a painting called "Gathering Wild Herbs." Here is a color-enhanced version. It was attributed to Li Tang, who lived around 1100. These two figures, Bo Yi and Shu Qi, did not like the rebelling Zhou Wu Wang, so they escaped into the Shouyang Shan Mountains, as shown in the painting, to eat wild peas. They soon died of hunger there. The story took place around 1000 BC. It was obviously a horrible way to practice political dissent. Fast forward to 200 BC, Chinese philosophers came up with the concept of yin, which is not yin as yin and yang. It is a different Chinese character. The best translation of yin is probably. Fading away. For conveniences, we'll call it escapism. Throughout the Chinese history, there has been a strong running of the political escapist culture. As I talk, I'm going to put up some paintings throughout history so you can get a sense of it. So since 300 BC, the Chinese people had a much nicer and elegant way to practice political dissent. Before it was banned by the communists in the 1950s, because the communists want everyone to come out and actively support its policies. The communists could do it because they had the wholehearted support of most intellectuals. An idea not hard to understand if you've been to the American schools, especially colleges. The purpose of our modern art series is to talk about modern art. Since I was from China, I probably should call it Western modern art. I don't know whether anybody has realized that, although I have not been avoiding Japanese art, I have been purposely avoiding Chinese art. It is a can of worm I did not want to touch. As we do special topics in the series on things crossing my mind, I think that this is a good time. To point out a common feature of the Western modern art, I mean that can-do spirit, that frustration when trying to get something done, and that insistence. Until recently, for quite some decades, 
Americans are the only people behaving this way, as the rest of the world, possibly with the exception of some former Eastern European countries, are increasingly practicing political suppression in the name of progressivism or political correctness. You know, before the institution of church burned philosophers and scientists at stakes, it, without any exaggeration, literally saved the Western civilization. The American dream must have been the way things were, something that could be safely taken for granted. I love this American optimism to no end, but it could backfire. When that complacency, or the blind trust, goes too far, as the American reaches the watershed moment, I think that it is a good time to talk about Chinese political escapism. After all, one of the running questions for us to answer throughout this series is whether modern art is dead. Or to put this in another way, in what direction would modern art develop? Back to the beginning of the story, China, for a long time since at least 200 BC, without democracy or an independent legal system, has been a cesspool of dirty politics. However, since the Sui Dynasty or 600 AD, which was before the development of Chinese paintings, the emperors run a clean official entrance examination system, amazingly clean, if you want my opinion. Until the late Qing Dynasty in the early 1900s, when people expected that some fashion of governance by reason, in some form of democracy, would replace the 2,000-year one-man rule. Of course, more than 100 years later, today China is probably practicing the worst kind of cronyism in politics, with the cronies concentrating increasingly more power into the hand of the government. While suppressing the mass ever so harshly, they must be the envy of the professional politicians and progressivists everywhere. When Jiang Zemin was the leader of the Communist Party in the 1990s, he once joked that he was encircled by the graduates of Tsinghua University, the best university in China, since it was my alma mater. My view may be biased. Today, in the Politburo Standing Committee, the only person from top-tier school is Premier Li Keqiang, who was graduated from the Beijing University and has been sidelined since his first day in office. The simple operation of end from done, or alienation, that we mentioned a couple of episodes ago, has fundamentally negated Deng Xiaoping's push for reform and openness in merely a couple of decades. Since the beginning of this American experiment of freedom and democracy, it has been 245 years. After the Mongol dynasty, known in China as the Yuan Dynasty, which lasted for less than 100 years, the two last dynasties of China, the Chinese Ming and Manchurian Qing, lasted for 277 and 268 years, respectively. I'm not sure about the early history of Rome, but if we can use 281 BC as the beginning of the Roman democracy as a modern state, and use 45 BC when Julius Caesar became the first dictator, or even 27 BC when Augustus became the first Roman Empire as the end, we're talking about similar lengths. The Roman Empire was rotten from inside because the invasion of the Muslims. Did not occur until much later. Similarly, without immediate outside threat, if the American democracy should fail, it must fail from inside, with outside help, of course, where a group of connected but only nominally elected people is going to concentrate on how to suppress people, largely by getting them to be accustomed to being suppressed. China is the shining example for this group. The first lesson from China is that they really could not allow the lives of people to be as good as they are today. The politicians need to create enough emergencies so they could concentrate powers and reduce the living standards of people, producing some nasty viruses to spread around, 
could be one of the ways to make this happen. In addition, in order to weaponize a certain group, such as a race, for instance, the power needs to make sure that the members of that group get bad education, could not raise their living standards through their own efforts, and more preferably have their families broken in the first place. I'm not going to go through the process here. It is too depressing and outside the scope of this program. If you're curious, you can get a step-by-step -step from Frederick Hayek's Road to Serfdom, a fascinating book to read anyway. You may ask how it is possible that reasonable human beings want to live at a lower living standards and with less freedom. We'll get to that in the next episode. I'll see you then.